This is my third video on this channel, Oliver Scott and Movies. Don't really know what it's going to be called. Anyway, I intend to talk about... I don't really want to talk about this entire film, or like, of Mice and Men. It's a fantastic film, and that's really all I can say. Um, so the only subject I'd like to speak of would be um, the end. Okay, actually I did, I now sort of feel like saying how great it was, <laughs> how sad it was when the old man's dog died. Okay, um, couldn't resist that when it, I actually thought about it. Okay, no, I want to talk about what the censoring is about and the, what the MPAA is about. Okay, this film makes it as a PG in the UK. Um, even though the guy has his hand grabbed and it's kind of violent. Now I worked out this and I thought, okay, mm, on that occasion they're not looking at the blood violence or the implication. He gets his hand crushed, that's sick, right? Um, that's, the violence that doesn't seem to come into play is put it, bumping up the rating. Instead, what's, what I would guess was the focus was that they said, oh, it was a self-defense. The, that, that, that crushing at the hand was a self-defense, right? So that's why it didn't get its rating bumped up. But then, when I say, as I guess confusing, because then at the end, they don't have any blood. Um, now let's talk about this profound ending where he essentially, John Malkovich's character puts Gary Sinise's character down. Um, right in the middle of his sentence, I get to tend the web, it's and this is profound and it definitely hits you. It's like, wow, um, heavy. When I watched it the second time, though, I couldn't help but notice that there's no blood. It's a, it's not a realistic headshot. Not that I particularly want to see Brain right to fly at his head. I'd be fine if it just happened all off camera, or maybe you could, there, there are techniques you can get around. I don't want to see a brain going on the floor necessarily, but I also don't want to see uh, someone who's just been shot in the head lying there and there's absolutely no blood coming out because it's not being true to reality. And on this occasion, I lead, I'm led to believe, okay, had that been bloody, it would have bumped up its rating. And I just don't agree with that. It's it's what happens if someone gets shot through the head, is their brain flies out. And in, in terms of if you're putting down your best friend, mentally challenged friend, that's going to come into play. One minute he's alive, the other he's dead. And it's not just that, but it's he's dead and his he's no longer whole anymore his brain is out on the floor. That is something that's playing a part in something. Not, in this, not that they really even had to show that, but they did. They showed it and yet it wasn't that. They showed him lying there with a bullet. He's just had a bullet through his head and there's nothing seeping out. That's just not... I don't agree with that. I think that's just being untrue to reality. And again, I don't exactly want to see blood, um, so I would have been fine if he had just capped him and then it cuts immediately from the moment it impacts, and then we don't see it again. And John Malkovich, he's such a great actor, he would have made me believe uh, he was seeing what he was seeing. Um, so I wouldn't have had needed the visual aid of seeing the brain and the end of the headshot. Anyway, with the first time I watched it, this was not a problem because I was so engaged, um, and I almost cried. <laughs> I didn't cry on that occasion, I was watching it with someone else. So... This comes highly recommended. Okay, talking about explorers now. Uh, Mick here left me a comment saying, you enjoyed the first hour or so and then it takes a wrong turn somewhere. Hmm, was that wrong turn <laughs> when they entered the alien craft? Because <laughs> that's, the film incorporated one uh, supernatural, unbelievable thing, which is fine. Films can do that and they can still retain believability. Um, and so, you, one, I will happily suspend my disbelief and I'll be on board with the characters. Well, forget about it with this film. It goes completely berserk when we see aliens and all this nonsense. Okay, but the film... Okay, look, they held it together. Ethan Hawke, River Phoenix, and the guy's name who ain't even on the box, unfortunately, so I can't see his name. I'm sure someone will remind me. They made it. They made it. It was their performances that made me watch the film. Not the plot, silly as it was. Okay, other film I watched lately, I bought this. Along with Shadowbox. Shadowbox is a film, uh, another, the wonderful Helen Mirren is in it again. That's a film I want to do a full review on, kind of. Um, this is not something I'll do a full review on, let me just say, too fast and too much. Seriously, the amount of stuff happening in this film, there were so many things that didn't sink in which should have. The only example I'm going to give now is when his... Um, 
the bald guy with a moustache who was also the police officer in The Man Without a Face, and he was doing a weird accent in this film, he's a companion to the lawnmower man. Okay, when he gets shot, um, that should be a big deal. That should be like, whoa, he just lost his mentor companion, a guy who took care of him. That's a big deal. And on top of that, he's going to pay, he's going to get his own back on the guy who shot him by forcing this guy to blow his brains out with a shotgun. This, that should have meant more, but it didn't, because it just was spick and spam, boom, ba boom, ba boom, and there's this happening, and there's this happening. I barely knew the character of the kid and the abusive father. Again, it's another thing. Everything just got lost in the shuffle. Nothing sunk in too fast. You know, I, I did enjoy Pierce Brosnan's character getting all pissed off and <laughs> he was like fuming and raging and that was a lot of fun. And I didn't take the film that seriously and I'm not suggesting the film dare, you know, bother being realistic because that, that's not the problem. It's just that it was too fast and too much. So, uh, Less is more, really, it's, and to do it at a nice pace and to let it sink in, not to go da dun da dun da dun and okay, I, I struggle to even remember monumental events of this film, and I struggle to remember them because it all just went so fast. In my minutes remaining, I'll read comments. Uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, on the Mosquito Coast. I have no idea what Kidab Albion is referring to here, but he says, Extraneous Tibet. Uh, the novel is written by Paul Theorux, father of Lewis Theorux, who spends his weekends engaging in non-central dialogue with American weirdos. I'm sorry, that uh, what is the relevance? And nor am I familiar with the reference. Cinema Snobs wrote in the early 90s, he should probably check it out again. He remembers liking it very much. Yeah. Um... Maintock says, I wouldn't exactly say that Harrison Ford's character in The Mosquito Coast hates technology, considering that he's an avid inventor himself, and he builds an ice from the cooling machine in the U.S. and makes a huge version of it. Toxic chemicals and all on The Mosquito Coast. Okay, my bad. Being more specific, uh, Harrison Ford's character hated some of the uh, results of technology and the complacency that, technology, that modern technological appliances can... Um, yeah, can train people to be complacent and spoiled. He resented that, so, yeah, okay, fair enough. Oh, yeah, I was kind of argumentative with Mika. Um, Mika 1280 posted a comment on my What's Going Down, and I, so, not on that, but on, rather, that's the comment I referred to in What's Going Down, and you, sorry about that, I was way, I, I was just, that's a bad habit to be argumentative. I just said something anemically, and, uh, yeah, um, no, uh, clearly Harrison Ford's character did go crazy somewhere, and that's an acceptable statement, and there was no need to really uh, try and add something to it. Um, yeah, clearly there was a breaking point and a snapping point uh, in Harrison Ford's character. And uh, I won't elaborate, because uh, I'll have the video just finish a minute and, be, and a minute early for a change. Stay tuned for reviews of Shadowboxer. I've thought about doing a review of the film Brick. I didn't understand it. Um, Bully's a film I love, I, I want to do a thing on that. Um, uh, Dunny Duck I've thought about, it's been a while, it's been like quite a few years since I've seen it. Um, some Canadian films, I want to do a video on Tom McCamus, my favourite Canadian actor, and all the films he's been in, he's done some terrific stuff, and he's a terrific actor. That does it, peace.